Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى من القول والفعل والعمل والهدى والنية إنك لا تهدي إلى صراط مستقيم رب شحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي النادي الاقتصاد الإسلامي بجامعة الكويت is privileged to host many Ramadan series of talks. Uh, entitled many topics relevant to uh, the blessed month of Ramadan. Uh, among those programs today, uh, our lecture is uh, about uh, what if this is the last Ramadan in your life. Before I begin the session, I begin the talk, I would like to thank Nadrik Tasad Ristami Bijami Adil Kuwait, all the participants, and uh, who joined already uh, and who will join inshallah with us uh, let's learn something from this talk and let's have some ideas uh, as the ramadan is very close to us uh, this is a very big gift and also blessed month for all muslims not only for muslims all creations all human beings in the world as the Ramadan reflects the systems and purification of human beings and societies, as well as uh, also uh, implement the peace and harmony in family and in society, in states. Uh, that's why uh, today's topic is, what if this is the last Ramadan in our life? Example, uh, as we know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem, Kullu nafsin da yaqatul maut. In this uh, surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said surah Ali Imran, uh, 185 verse number. As we know, all soul, every soul will test death. That means maybe death will come to you, to me, today or tomorrow, or maybe next month, or in during Ramadan, or maybe after Ramadan. For example, uh, we should remember that life is very short and it's certain, of course, uh, the death will come to you and to me, to everyone. And we can see in, as an example of coronavirus, we know hundreds of thousands of people infected with corona and also died in the world. So nobody knows when you will die, I will die. When uh, Azrael will come to you, to me. So we should remember that the life is very short and we will die one day, two day tomorrow or a day after tomorrow. As Allah said, as I said, every soul, every soul will test that. So let's remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us a blessed month. Very important, the significance and importance of Ramadan is very, very huge, as we know. Uh, and we will discuss later what are the blessings, what are the gifts, given by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us during Ramadan. So if this is the last Ramadan, so there are two options. Either you grab, you achieve, you earn the blessings of Allah during Ramadan, or you will be loser. You will be failure to achieve the blessings, to gain the gifts of Allah, to be close to Allah, then this is up to you, up to me. Either I am taking seriously in my consideration that this is my last Ramadan. That means you are very serious and you have to, when you are very serious, you will of course 
uh, properly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, properly uh, perform the salat, ibadat, and other activities uh, that uh, uh, reflect the purification of your heart, your soul, your mind, and you will achieve the uh, pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second option is, or you will be a failure, you will be a loser if I or you uh, don't focus, don't consider the Ramadan as the last Ramadan. And we don't properly worship Allah, we don't properly perform salawat, ibadat, and we don't perform uh, all these uh, activities that those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave us. So that means uh, I will be failure to achieve the blessings of Allah, to achieve his uh, gifts uh, in the uh, Ramadan. So that's why we should uh, focus uh, we should consider and we should think if uh, I will consider Ramadan as the uh, last Ramadan in my life or not. That's why, why Ramadan? Let's talk about Ramadan. Why Ramadan is very important. What are the uh, basic foundation and important uh, Elements are, are we, we can say, uh, the components of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, fi surah al-Baqarah, 183, verse number. Ya amanu, kama Oh, you who believe or have believed, Decreed upon you is fasting, as it was decreed upon those before you, that you may become righteous. That means the fasting is uh, obligatory uh, duty of us. Why? Taqwa means uh, Allah consciousness. Taqwa means fear of Allah. To be afraid of Allah, but to achieve taqwa is like Allah consciousness. That means whatever you do, whatever I do, I should believe that Allah is watching us. Allah is watching you. So uh, when you feel that Allah is watching you, you never or you can never do any wrongdoings. You can never be involved with any bad things because you believe that Allah is watching you, Allah is watching me. That means you have a kind of taqwa, that is the Allah consciousness. So, and also taqwa is the source to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, to achieve taqwa uh, uh, the, during Ramadan, siyam, fasting is very important. And when you fast, what are the uh, good characteristics? And what are the uh, main components to achieve taqwa, to be uh, Allah conscious uh, uh, because of fasting, we will know later, inshallah, in our discussion. Uh, so this is Ramadan, uh, and fasting is one of the main and major component of the, this blessed month of Ramadan. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala and qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتاكم رمضان شهر مبارك فرض الله عز وجل عليكم صيامه تفتح فيه أبواب السماء وتغلق فيه أبواب الجحيم وتغل فيه مرادة الشياطين لله فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر من حرم خيرها فقد حرم So this in this hadith سنة النسائي uh, reported this hadith, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there has come to you Ramadan, a blessed month, which Allah, the Almighty, sublime has enjoyed you to fast. This is the first thing. And 
what are the uh, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In it, in this month, the gates of heavens are opened and the gates of uh, hell are closed, hellfire, and every devil is chained up. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a night which is better than thousand months. Whoever is deprived or deprived of its goodness is indeed deprived. That means in this Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when opened all the doors of heaven and closed the doors of hellfire and there is a chained uh, evils and devils and there is a night uh, gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the better of thousand months thousand other months that means to worship to perform ibadah salawat do adiyah the ramadan is very important why when why we can see uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the door of heavens means this is the opportunity to grab this opportunity to enter jannah to be uh, qualified to be in jannah to be qualified to attach more much more to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in that uh, we can you know uh, be free uh, or save from the hellfire. And, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, why this layla, layla tul qatiri khayru min al -fishar? This layla, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started revelation of Quran, the best book, best revelation in the history of human beings. Al-Quran revealed, was revealed in this month. And in this Laylatul Qadr, that's why whoever, you know, lost uh, in this night, whoever lost this month, I mean, whoever, you know, unable to achieve this or grab this opportunity, that means he is a loser. And he is, uh, uh, he is a loser. He, he is a failure in his life. That means if you consider this is the last month, last Ramadan in your life. So that means you have to be serious. You have to grab this opportunity. This is very important for us. Okay, let's proceed to next slide. In another hadith, وفي حديث قطيبة أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام شهر رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُثِرَ لَهُمَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ تَنْبِهِ So this hadith as well, uh, hadith Qutayba, it was also narrated by another hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu Allah ta'ala anhu also narrated this hadith, whoever spends the nights of Ramadan in prayer, qiyam, out of faith, you know, and also out of, uh, you know, uh, faith and hope of reward blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our you know your previous sins uh, my previous sins and you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said maybe previous sin even if you do some you know uh, unconsciously uh, any sins after that after this month allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might forgive you because you fast in Ramadan, you perform fasting in Ramadan, you perform Salat properly, you perform Ibadah properly, and, and you achieve the good characteristics in Ramadan. So that means these are the uh, good gifts and bigger, huge gifts and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan. That's why we talk about Ramadan. That's why we say it. If you uh, consider this Ramadan as the last Ramadan in your life, let's achieve all together, let's achieve the, and let's grab these opportunities and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, uh, let's proceed. If uh, you, myself, and all of us consider this Ramadan is the last Ramadan, and we have to achieve the blessings and gifts of Allah in the holy month of Ramadan. Why? 
This month of Ramadan is the month of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahma, mercy is available in this month. And the huge mercy. And his forgiveness. Allah will forgive the mu'min people who perform fasting, perform salawat. And uh, properly live a life in the Ramadan, uh, spend time properly according to Islamic principles, Islamic guidelines of Ramadan. So let's achieve mercy of Allah, let's gain forgiveness of Allah, and let's be saved from the hellfire by performing in Ramadan, by achieving the goals of Ramadan. Then let's att attach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very closely. If we, yourself and all Muslims, uh, perform fasting and also we, uh, we spend our days, times and Ramadan accordingly. So we can be too much attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, close to him. And that's, you know, a kind of a very uh, pleasure, an important pleasure you know, many Muslims uh, don't uh, focus, uh, you know, to gain a thawab, ajar min Allah. They, you know, seek, they seek, they want, they demand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attachment. And Allah's, uh, you know, rida Allah and maradatillah and liqa Allah, yeah, maybe in, 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 uh, in hereafter, in Qiyamah, we all uh, believe that we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can meet him. Okay. Because if you want to meet him, if you want to see him, you have to be attached to him. How to attach to him? How to make uh, much more attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By worshipping, by performing salawat, ibadat, and by spending times and days, nights during Ramadan properly. Whatever guidelines are given in Sunnah, in Quran, let's perform. And another, you know, very much important uh, uh, component, opportunity, gift, that is Shafa'atul Quran, intercession of the Holy Quran, recommendation of Holy Quran. You know, if you read the Quran during Ramadan or any other days. You are attached to Quran, Al Quran. You understand the Quran. You believe uh, whatever you read, you study, you do research. Al Quran yashfa fi yom al qiyamah. Al Quran shafa recommendation intercession very much important for us. And in this Ramadan. Some other uh, important uh, characteristics uh, that we can achieve during Ramadan. First of all, spiritual reflection. If you myself fast, there's a kind of purification of our mind, soul, heart, and physical, is physical uh, purification. Whoever fast in the Ramadan or any other time, he is kind of pure or he is always safe uh, from doing any wrongdoings, from najasat, from, from haram, forbidden things, from, uh, you know, uh, najasat, from uh, ma'asi, all the sins, nobody will do, will conduct any sin any wrongdoing if he is fasting. If he does fast, if he recites the Quran, he does salawat, you know, there's the spiritual reflection in Ramadan. That means we can, we can develop our mind, soul, heart spiritually. And you know, in during Ramadan, when uh, we do sadaqah, we do zakat and all these, uh, you know, have, huge and deep reflection in spiritual uh, purification, spiritual development, to understand the fact of Ramadan, to understand the blessings of Allah, to understand Allah's 
uh, uh, you know, uh, present. And this, and spiritually, when you uh, recite the Quran during Ramadan, also you can feel, you know, pleasure in your mind. You can feel peace in your heart, in your mind. So it's spiritual reflection with, uh, you know, there is a, a, a part of a Muslim we know, tasawwuf, ilm tasawwuf. There are good things in ilm tasawwuf as well. Who are always, you know, uh, involved in doing some ibadat, performing ibadat, salawan, to uh, attach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there is no any, uh, you know, a superstition, if there is no any other, uh, you know, bad things or contradict any things that, that contradict to Islamic principles, these are, you know, uh, not a, uh, allowed in Islam. But when you see any other ibadat and spiritual uh, uh, practices, activities, uh, you know, to be close to Allah with tahajjud salawatu, uh, tahajjud salawatu nafila, and Adaiya, and also, uh, you know, Salawat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all this ibadah will develop spiritually. Second is self uh, improvement. Uh, self improvement as well, as I said, is spiritual improvement and also physical improvement. In Ramadan, when you uh, do ibadah, you perform Salawat, and you uh, fast and you, you know, help others, you stand by others, and you help other Muslims, and you strengthen the brotherhood among Muslims, you know, that means you are uh, improving yourself as a Muslim to be muttaqi, to be minas salihin, to be minal muttaqin. You know, these are self-improvement in two parts. You need to improve yourself in spiritually and physically. Physically to avoid wrongdoings, to avoid bad things, to not to involved in any bad characteristics, ideologies, practices. So this is self improvement. Thirdly, hate and devotion or worship. The slide before, brother Yahya. So uh, hate and devotion and worship. Hate and devotion worship, you know, in Ramadan, as we see this opportunity to uh, perform more ibadah, more devotion uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is good opportunity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you seven times more, 70 times more, even 700 times more. Who knows? There is no limit in Allah's blessings. 1% of his blessings is given in the world. There are 99% of his blessings are left to be given in hereafter to, for Muslims, for mu'min, who are a proper mu'min, who are real mu'min. So why don't we involve in this ibadah? Much more uh, attachment, to be much more attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another opportunity we need to gain, we need to uh, practice is generosity. Generosity, hospitality, you know, to uh, sacrifice our things, to help others, to do sadaqa, to, uh, you know, uh, pay zakah, sadaqa, to pay zakah, to, for, you know, uh, help others by food, by clothes, and by providing foods or clothes or money as much as we can. And also generosity uh, in our uh, kalam, in our talkings, speakings, how to be generous uh, with others, how to be humble with others, how to uh, be uh, a, an idle man. And as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was rahmatan lil alameen. Prophet was sent as a messenger for all human beings, all these creations, not only for Muslims. And he treated Muslims and non-Muslims as human beings with you know proper manner, with proper generosity. So these are the things, you know, 
uh, very important for us during Ramadan, especially. And uh, the fifth uh, is sacrifice. Atadhiya, you know, sacrifice uh, in many things, in many ways you can do. Sacrificing uh, money, sacrificing, as I said, I, you know, al-amal uh, al-khairiya. الخدمات الخيرية والدعوية والاجتماعية والدينية. As you see, the Nadulik the Saudi Islami is conducting many programs, events, lectures, talks. These are, you know, sacrificing who are working here. This is khidma. These are services for Muslims, even non-Muslims who are attending the program. So you do more sacrifice. Sometimes, you know, we believe that if we sacrifice, if we spend money for others, maybe I'm losing 100 US dollar. If I spend 100 US dollars for poor people, for masakin, that's wrong, that's wrong perception. Whatever you spend in sabilillah, fi sabilillah, in faq fi sabilillah, you know, that means you are increasing your wealth. You are increasing your blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will give you double. Allah will give you much more than that you spent for others. So sacrificing in Islam is one of the most and valuable, uh, uh, you know, element of Islam and Muslims uh, to be success in life, to be, you know, rich to other people. When you see, you sacrifice your uh, money, your wealth, your thinking, your thought. Some people sacrifice the, their thought, their philosophy in the field of da'wah example, in the field of education. That's also a kind of sacrificing your time, your knowledge, your thought, your philosophy, and also sacrificing money, sacrificing foods, sacrificing houses. You, you have a 1,000 US dollars in a month and you spend 800, 800 US dollars and you have 200 US dollars and you know your neighbors are suffering from you know not having foods and you know they're they don't have food they don't have earnings they don't have income so why don't you help them with this 200 US dollars don't think that you are spending you are losing money think that you are investing in your life you are investing in your thawab you are investing in your blessings then you if you believe in that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely will uh, bless you much more than that you spend your sacrifices inshallah let's see in ramadan all these blessings all these gifts mercy of allah forgiveness of allah safety from the hellfire attachment to allah intercession and shafa'at al-Qur'an, spiritual reflection, self-improvement, hate and devotion, generosity, sacrifice. How to achieve all these things? How to grab these opportunities, these blessings and gifts? Let's see in the in next slide. We do, I, you know, uh, studied and I think there are three kinds of uh, responsibilities if you fulfill, if you implement, if you practice, you can achieve all these six blessings, six types of uh, gifts of Allah you can grab, you can achieve. Firstly, religious responsibilities. al al wajibat ad Religious responsibilities, what are the duties and what are the responsibilities in Ramadan to perform, to uh, practice, then we can uh, have blessings of Allah, we can have gifts of Allah. Secondly, social responsibilities, al-mas'uliya al-ijtima'iya, al-wajibat al-ijtima'iya. In society, when you live in a family, you live in a society, you have many responsibilities. You have many duties to your family, to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your uh, neighbor, to your village, to your qariya, to your madina, to your state, to your country. These are social responsibilities. 
Then thirdly, ethical responsibilities. You know, al-mas'uliyya al-akhlaqiyya. Al-wajibat al-akhlaqi. There are, you know, akhlaq al-islamiyya very much important for all Muslims. We are in this stage in the world, if you see, we are failure in the field of politics, in the field of economy, in the field of uh, system, in the field of global development, in the field of international diplomacy, in the field of even, you know, uh, technology, sciences. Why we do not have ethical values? We do not have, you know, al hawiyya al islamiyya We don't practice al akhlaq al islamiyya In uh, past uh, ages, in past years, if you look into the contribution of Muslim scholars, sciences, you see all Muslim scholars, scientists, contributed a lot to the sciences and technologies in medicine, Ibn Sina, Khawarizmi, in medicine, in, in, in uh, mathematics, in philosophy, you know, Ibn Al-Qayyim Al-Jawzi, Imam Ghazali, and you know, Al-Arawi, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, many other Muslim scholars. In also in a uh, uh, legitimate field or in, in legal system, uh, in business, in trade, if you see, Al-Aimma Al-Arba'a, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i, uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, and many other Imams, many other scholars contributed to this, you know, legal systems and, you know, uh, Islamic uh, principles, Sharia, Maqasid the Sharia, objectives of Sharia, how to implement all these contributions of Muslims, ulama, scholars to the society to the states, to the world, to the humanity, to human beings. So why these contributions, and we led the world many years, we led the world during, uh, uh, you know, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Al-Khulafa Rashidin, you know, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, from Abu Bakr, you know, many khilafa, then Ottoman Empire, uh, Al-Khilafa al-Uthmaniya, but why? why we lost this power because we don't practice ethical responsibilities we don't practice al akhlaq al islamiyya we forgot the islamic islamic framework that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed practiced in the medina how did he establish this medina you know these are the thing very important and in ramadan let's see what are the uh, responsibilities to achieve ethical values, to be uh, good characteristics uh, in our life, in our this life? Let's see in the in next slide. Let's start with religious responsibilities. What are the religious responsibilities? We know, all of us knows, uh, you know, know, fasting and performing salah. There are many... Uh, First of all, as-siyam. Kama dhakir tu sabiqan, as-siyam kutiba alaykum as-siyam. So fasting is very important and there's an obligatory duty we know. And performing salat. This is uh, also one component of religious responsibilities. Properly we have to fast. Properly we perform salawat and completion of your fasting without any uh, legal excuses. You, nobody can leave fasting in Ramadan. No, nobody uh, can, you know, avoid uh, fasting in Ramadan. So let's complete our fasting in Ramadan. This is number one. Number two, uh, to perform congregational prayers. A salawat, al, uh, you know, a, al wajiba, a salawat, uh, al fardiya. So we have to perform salawat. Uh, we see many uh, in Muslim societies in countries, many Muslims, uh, you know, they fast during the day times, but they don't perform salah. So, you know, fasting as, uh, you know, congregational, uh, congregational duty, as well as prayer as well. So don't leave the salah, don't leave uh, performing salah and, 
do fasting only <laughs> that's not uh, you know uh, the fasting you don't need to uh, give more importance to fasting than the prayer you know these are very important for us to to fast during ramadan and to perform a salawat alhams of course there there is no any reason that you can leave prayer you and and this, especially in indian subcontinents if you see in nepal in bangladesh in pakistan in india people are very much <laughs> attached and uh, to you know nawafil al ibadah nawafil with uh, with other uh, exceptional duties rather than you know uh, congregational prayers congregational duties so that's so we have to keep it in our mind what are the uh, al fardhiyat what are the wajibat and what are the nawafil so then let's do uh, let's give importance to the fardhiyat first then the uh, you know uh, nawafil then other things so that's why we have to uh, perform i salawat al khams properly on time then let's perform tarawih tarawih is uh, you know a salawat and nawafil and exceptional prayers so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessings and extra ibadah il you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be much more happy you see if you have servants Like for example, so he is doing his job. He, his job is driving. Example, a driver. He is doing his job. He is drive driving your car, and he is taking you around that you need to go around. So he is performing his responsibilities and duties. But when he does some extra works, extra duties, those are not his duties. Example, he is helping you in. Uh, doing some in in purchasing some bazaar, he, he is going in a swap. He is helping you to carry the things. He is helping you in cooking. That means he is making you more happy. He is uh, uh, you know uh, attracting you with his extra activity, extra performance. That means you will be happy much more, and then you will give him sometimes allowances. You you will give him gifts much more. Give this is same thing. when we perform our uh, faraid we will perform our you know uh, congregational things and uh, important things uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and if we perform some extra activities extra ibadah uh, additional uh, salawat ibadah that means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will very much happy with will be very happy with us example a salawat uh, also when you can uh, perform some salawat in the last part of line tahajjud wa min al-layl fa tahajjud bihi nafilatan lak asa an yabathaka rabbuka maqaman mahmuda allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in uh, in surah al-muzammil in the uh, first uh, part of revelation Uh, duration of the revelation ya ayyuhal muzammil qum al-layla illa qalila nisfahu aw inqus minhu qalila aw zid alayhi wa rattil al-qur'an tartila in this verse you know uh, spending sometimes or more than half of night or a little bit less than the half of night times or you can also increase sometimes but do allah didn't say that you do qiyamul layl the whole night no need you just do sometimes of the night some or half of the night and then you wake up before subuh then you pray tahajjud then then you perform congregational prayer salatul fajr this is the thing sometimes in we can see in our society we do a uh, whole night until 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock ibadah then we we miss salatul fajr that's very wrong concept that's very wrong for a uh, practice we we shouldn't do that so we do qiyamul layl then we sleep and then we uh, we perform some salawatun nafila 
to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can perform a congregational prayer, inshallah. Okay, then another religious uh, responsibility is Quranic recitation and studies. We do, uh, many Muslims, and even in Arab countries, I know many, uh, some of my friends there, they can speak Arabic very, very well. They know Arabic very well, but they don't know how to recite the Quran properly with Tajweed. Allah said, So to recite the Quran, you know, in the way of Tartil, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite the Quran, you know, uh, by stopping after every ayah with hadar, very uh, in tartil way, tajweed way, tahseen way. So we have to learn how to recite the Quran first, properly. And Sa'ad ibn Hisham an Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, la a'lamu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qara al-Qur'an kullahu fi laylatin, wa la qama laylatan hatta sabah, this hadith, you know, uh, shows us that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be very much involved in, especially in Ramadan, in reciting, in recitation of Quran, in, in study of Quran. Uh, in Laylatul Qadr, in other uh, nights in the, in during Ramadan. In, uh, he, he used to give more importance in Ramadan. That's why we should believe, we should focus, uh, and we should practice the practices of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abi uh, Umamata radiallahu ta'ala an qal, sami'atu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul, اقرأوا القرآن فإنه يأتي يوم القيامة شفيعا لأصحابه رواه مسلم as I said uh, if we read the Quran if we recite the Quran in hereafter the Quran will come and do شفاعه for us as Prophet said so why don't we take this opportunity let's recite the Quran during Ramadan let's complete recitation of Quran in the Ramadan, but with proper reading, with proper recitation. Don't need to uh, recite so fast. As we see in Indian subcontinent, they recite the Quran, they recite the Quran very fast without Tajweed Tahseen. So that's not a proper recitation. They uh, recite like, Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbina Alamin Rahman Rahim Maliki Yamdiniya Kana Abdu Waya Kana Stain Hidris Radham Stigma. Why? Why you are doing this kind of recitation? We have to recite in a proper way with Tajweed and Tahseen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Maliki Yamidin. Ya Kana Abdu Waya Kana Stain. Ihdina Shirat Al Mustaqim. Shirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-mabdubi alayhim Walad-dalli So we have to recite in a way that, you know, we can fulfill the requirements of recitation. We can fulfill the requirements of Tajweed and Tahseen in Tartil. So this, inshallah, we keep in our mind. Let's see uh, in uh, religious responsibilities, the third responsibility is grabbing the nights of Qadr. The next slide. So grabbing the night of uh, Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. In the last 10 days, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, would stay awake at night and pray the whole night, not alone, but together with his family members. عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى أنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر الأواخر من رمضان أحيا الليلة وأيقظ أهلا وجد وشد المئزة متفق عليه يعني من بخاري ومسلم 
So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he used to awake in uh, you know the last ten nights of Ramadan, and he, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, also keep awake at night and uh, do worship and devotion, ibadah and tilawatul Quran, recitation of Quran and salawatul nafila, and also he used to awaken his family, not only himself, with, the, with his family, and prepare himself to be more diligent in worship, to be more, you know, attached in worship, to be more close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't need to do this too much ibadah, he did not need to do all this, you know, uh, salawat, uh, uh, I mean, uh, special salawat and uh, additional ibadah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did to, to teach his uh, ummah, his followers, Ashabu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Atba' Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ummatuhu, uh, we are his ummah. So he taught us how to spend the nights, 10 nights, last 10 nights of Ramadan. Because to grab the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadri. Be why Laylatul Qadr is very important for us? Even Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another hadith, uh, he said, Taharru Laylatul Qadri fil ashri al awakhiri min Ramadan. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat. Also hadith in muttafaqun alayhi. Bukhari wa Muslim, to look for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 days of Ramadan. And why this Layla is very much important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna awzallahu fi Laylatul Qadr wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر. So in this special line, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed started revelation of the Quran. The Quran is we, what is the Quran? The guideline of human being, the guideline of life, the guide code of life, the guideline of uh, the, the human beings, not only Muslims. And the Quran is the constitution at the store of Muslim, not only Muslim, constitution of society, how to build a society, how to build a peaceful country, how to build a peaceful, harmonious world how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam established Medina, how did Umar Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu lead the nations, how did Abu Bakr Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu practice the practices of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Khulafai uh, Rashidin and all Muslim leaders. So the Quran is a constitution, a code of life. And Revelation started in this, this night, Laylatul Qadr. So in, that's why this Laylatul Qadr is uh, better than thousand nights as uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also says in, the, in Hadith. And uh, you know, Naika just come down uh, in this night uh, with the spirit uh, in, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Angels, Malaika, you know, uh, comes down in, uh, in this night and to send the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his uh, these believers who are, uh, who are uh, devoted, who are very much uh, attached in this night to grab the opportunity, blessings, and gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we, you know, grab these nights in ibadah, 
in a tilawa, in salawatun nafila. That means we, you know, grave the opportunities of thousand nights who are who were involved in ibadah, in devotion, in 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 you know in other good activities, practices of Islam, thousand times, thousand years times. That means in a night, in only one night, we can achieve those sawab, those ajar, those blessings, those gifts. So that's why let's grab this night uh, and let's be much more involved in the last 10 days of Ramadan, inshallah. And uh, next slide, uh, in the religious responsibility, we can see uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or making dua uh, as much as you can. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عن أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ينزل ربنا تبارك وتعالى كل ليلة إلى السماء الدنيا حين يبقى ثلث الليل الآخر فيقول من يدعوني فأستجيب له ومن يسألني فأعطيه ومن يستغفرني فأغفر له سوان الله سبحانه وتعالى you know in the, in every night, not on, only in the uh, in Ramadan, but in Ramadan, if you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala comes down in the first uh, first sama sama dunya. Then he asked whoever among you to ask forgiveness, whoever. Among you need something you can ask from me. I am ready to give you. Wherever among my, my believers uh, seeks, you know, a forgiveness, I will forgive you. So why don't you ask uh, in, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why don't we uh, awake in the last part of night and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We should seek forgiveness. We should seek rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we need. You need to be an Islamic scientist in your field. You, need, you want to be a Islamic scholar. You want to uh, achieve or you want to do a good business. You want to be successful in your life. You, you need uh, peace in your family. You need peace or understanding among you, your husband, your wife, with your children. Why don't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You need to cry in the last part of night and seek forgiveness. And whatever you need, you ask from Allah. Allah said, I'm ready, I'm ready. Why don't you ask from me? This is the best opportunity. And in this time, your dua, your you know, request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be failed, inshallah. That's what the, and, and also in the hadith, an Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha kana awwalu laylatin min shahri ramadhan, sufidati shayatin wa maradatul jinnah wa aghliqat abwabu nar, falam yuftah minha babun, wa fuhat abwabu jannah, falam yuqaq, منها باب وينادي مناد يا باغي الخير أقبل ويا باغي الشر أقصر ولله عتقاء من النار وذلك كل ليلة every night every night this is how beautiful thing how blessed thing you know angel or Allah سبحانه وتعالى is asking as well the angel is asking from you Whatever you need, good things you ask, I'm ready to give you. You are asking to be uh, uh, to avoid the bad things and the wrongdoings. You ask from Allah. You cannot control yourself. You ask blessings of Allah. You ask Allah, may oh Allah, please help me to avoid these things, to avoid wrongdoings, to avoid uh, you know uh, forbidden things. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you these blessings, will help you. Allah's help is always ready there. So that's why inshallah, 
the opportunity the, in, in the month of Ramadan much more than other nights, other months. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Malaika yeah, ask, you know, and also they, they are ready to give you. And the Malaika are ready to uh, send your message, your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malaika will say, oh Allah, this, uh, this your beaver, Ahmed, he needs this peace, he needs this blessing, he is asking, he is crying. And Allah, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him, will give him. He is ready. So let's grave, let's achieve, let's attain this forgiveness, Allah's blessings. Let's do dua, let's ask from Allah. Let's seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then inshallah, we'll achieve the things. Next slide, we see, uh, secondly, first uh, responsibility, we uh, completed, alhamdulillah, that is the religious responsibility in Ramadan. In Ramadan, another very important responsibility, we have to perform, we have to practice social responsibilities. Firstly, taking care of others in own society. We have to take care of my family, my brother, my wife, my husband, my children, my relatives, my neighbors. We have to take care. How to take care? Rights of other. Hukul, you know, al-hukuk. Al-hukuk, rights of others, your rights, towards your wife, your rights towards your husband, your rights towards to your ch children, your rights towards your relatives, your neighbors, and others in the society. How there are beautiful uh, uh, elements we know, loan, zakah, sadaqatul fitr, charity. If someone asks loan from you, as you know, he needs loan. He needs qard hasana. Why don't you give him? If you are able to give him, if you have capacity, capability. So let's help others by giving loans if someone asks loan from you. And you means we have to also uh, pay zakat, whoever qualified, whoever uh, fulfilled the requirements to pay zakat. Masarifu zakat, we have to know how to pay zakat to whom we need to pay zakah. So, and also sadaqatul fitr. Sadaqatul fitr and also charity to infaq fi sabilillah, to help others uh, to live a life and to uh, your relatives, neighbors, and the society and doing amal al khairiyah, al khidmat al diniyah, al khairiyah. So let's take care of others when you are ca capable you have ability, you have all this capacity to help others, to take care of others, do it. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, and huma qal, kana nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ajwad al-nas, wa ajwad ma yakunu fi Ramadan, hina yalqahu jibirilu, wa kana jibirilu alayhi wa sallam, yalqahu fi kulli laylatin min Ramadan, fa yudarisuhu al-Qur'ana, this is very important practice of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. MashaAllah. He was too much generous. He was too much, you know, involved in hospitality, generosity, charity to help others, to take care of others, especially in Ramadan, especially in Ramadan. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to help others during Ramadan much more than the other months in the year. And he used to help also, uh, he used to give charity. He used to uh, give sadaqa in the Ramadan. Only uh, that's why it said, nasi wa ma yakunu Ramadan. The, among the people, among the Sahaba, among others, he was he was the much more generous than the others, a much more giving person than the others, much more 
you know, helping men in, than the others. So let's try this in our capacity. You know, no, I am not saying that whatever you have, just give to others. Not like that. You fulfill your needs. Whatever you need, you fulfill first. Well, then you look after to your uh, family, your relatives, then neighbors, then the society. So then inshallah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us uh, much more than, than we spend for others. We take care of others. Number two is exemplary uh, behavior. You know, uh, this is very important, you know, uh, behavior. Al-mu'amala and al-mukalama. Uh, we, sometimes we take very simply uh, that uh, behaving with others, talking with others in harsh way in very uh, difficult way. You know, uh, we, in Arabic, there is a term, hakam, jarahatu sinani lahal tiyamu, wa la yaltamu ma jarahal lisan. So the tongue, lisan, is a sharp thing. Sharper than the knife, sharper than the safe. If you harsh, if you, you know, harm someone by your tongue, by your listen. You know, that harm, that harsh, you know, will never go away from his mind. You are just harming him. You are harming his mind. You are harming his, his understanding. So we have to believe in the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he used to behave with others. You know, munafiqoon. Mathalan Abdullah ibn Ubay, Ra'is al munafiqin and other munafiq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to know who, are, who they are. What are their characters? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to know, but he, he you know, how did he behave with them in a proper manner? He showed them the manner of Islam, manner of prophet, manner of Quran, behavior, Islamic behavior, Islamic mu'amala, uh, al-Islamiyya. So that's why we should show our behavior, our uh, identity, our ideology. Someone is, uh, is talking with you in a harsh way. You talk to him in a good way, in a good manner. You know, that's why uh, uh, in the Quran, Allah said, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا So you have to uh, reply him, respond him in a good manner. As the Quran said, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنِ You just talk to him. Uh, you just uh, do, if you need to uh, compete with him, if you need to debate with him, do it in, in the way of Mawida Hasana. Udu'u ila sabi'li rabbika bil hikmah, bil hikmati wal mawidati al-hasana, wajadilhum billati hiya ahsan. Bil hikmah in a wisdom way, in a, you know, uh, a proper way, in the Quranic way, in Islamic way, prophetic practices, you have to follow how Prophet behave with others. And also, if you see, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, faced uh, a big problem and he was attacked in Taif. And how did he respond to him? How did he respond to Jibreel Alayhi Salam? So this is very much important. We need. We need to. Uh, uh, we need to follow our Prophet We need to be uh, his his uh, followers in in a proper way, in a proper manner. He is our idol. He is our model. Nobody is our model. Neither Abraham Lincoln, nor nor any other people in the leaders in ulama. Yes, they are our models 
if they if they follow prophet's practices prophet system is our first model that's why uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in the quran for you this is the best model laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasan in your prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in how did he deal with his family ummahatul mu'minin how did he deal with uh, followers ashabi rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how did he deal with munafiqin how did he deal with non believers with with jewish with christians mal yahud wan nasara how did he deal with others uh, in other states in other Nadashi, you know, Kisra wa Kaisara. How did send he send the letters of diplomacy and letters of cooperation? You know, if you look in his practices, wallahi, wallahi, this is very uh, impressive and beautiful example for us. Inshallah, uh, we hope that if you myself we practice the practices of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. his behavior and also we take care of our society family social responsibilities inshallah we can grab the blessings and gifts of allah in the ramadan let's look uh, into the third responsibility next slide is our uh, ethical responsibilities al akhlaq al islamiya al wajibat al akhlaqiya here Uh, we know even not only in ramadan in other times in other months other days we are involved in many unconscious bad and forbidden activities movements we have to avoid forbidden activities and movements and we have to avoid watching uh, to illegal and forbidden pictures videos films and also a pornographic example and you know uh, the naked picture and other things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran qul inna ma harrama rabbi al fawahish ma ghahara minha wa ma batan wal ithm wal baghy bi ghayr al haqq wa an tushriku billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun surah al a'raf allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no he forbidden the moralities fawahish immoralities what is a print of them and what is concealed you know and sin and oppression without right al bagh don't oppress without right and also sometimes we don't associate with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a Uh, justice way in a haq and we don't need to uh, there are many uh, practices in in especially in indian subcontinent they do shirk you know allah said wa an tushriku billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun these things you know are happening in especially indian subcontinent bangladesh pakistan india sri lanka in other countries in mazar we you know in the grapes we have many superstitions we say many things sometimes some people say uh, you know allah gave his all mafatihul ghaib to prophet and allah is now you know he is resting wal iyad billah this uh, that you know whenever we talk about allah whenever we compare something that is a kind of comparison with allah that's totally shirk if you seek something from a grave from a wali that's shirk you have to ask you have to seek from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is giving who can give you things that you need nobody other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you things that you need so why are you seeking something from uh creations of allah from people that created by allah so that's why these things especially in the indian subcontinent in other parts of 
uh, countries in the world, we have to think about it seriously. And also, whatever we do seen uh, openly or secretly, as I said in, in, uh, in, our, in my speech, in the beginning of my speech, whatever you do, you perform secretly, you have to believe that Allah is watching you. Allah is watching you. If you are conscious, if you think, if you see that you are, uh, you know, uh, you are under control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, under observation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are two malaika kiram katibin. Kiram katibin ya'lamoon ma taf'aloon. So we have to believe whatever you do secretly or openly, publicly, Allah is watching you. There are angels are writing whatever you do. There are, you know, camera, there are tasjil. So then uh, you cannot do any wrongdoings. You cannot be involved in any bad things whenever you believe that Allah is watching you and you have consciousness, you have taqwa. Then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us with uh, his blessings and gifts. Yeah, next slide. We, we see in, in many other characters, many other uh, our dealings, our um, in life, in, not only in Ramadan, but especially in Ramadan, whenever you are involved with some characters, with some activities, with maharimullah and with, uh, you know, uh, sins. In Yom al Qiyamah, people will come and then see that there is nothing for him, but he believed, oh no, I did many good things in, in my life. I did many sadaqah, I did many uh, zakah, I paid zakat, I have people, but where are my blessings? Where are my ajr? But when he sees that there is nothing for him, there is zero because he used to involve or be involved in maharim Allah in tahakuha in, in hadith Sunan ibn Majah. So we have to, uh, we should not transgress the sacred limits of Allah. So if you do that, that means in hereafter, in Yom al Qiyamah, you will come with nothing. You will see that there is a zero for you. So whatever you do and be careful, whatever uh, you uh, pay, you help others, you do worship, everything don't do for uh, showing up, don't do uh, you, in, in a way you are helping, in a way you are performing salat and you are doing ibadah and in other way you are doing wrongdoings and example, uh, many leaders uh, nowadays, they are involved in illegal things, they are involved in facade, they are involved, involved in wrongdoings, they are involved in zulum. So, you know, at the end, you will see there is nothing ajar for you. So that's why you have to believe in that. In another hadith, uh, you know, in our uh, uh, activities or in our sometimes, especially young generation, a shabab, they are involved in many wrongdoings. They, of course, they cannot control themselves from these wrongdoings. But we have to remember, whatever you do, I do. If these are wrongdoings, you know, in hereafter, we will be responsible. We will be asked for that. And Abrahman ibn Abi Sa'id al Khudri and Abihi and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam قال لا ينظر الرجل إلى عورة الرجل ولا المرأة إلى المرأة ولا يفضي الرجل إلى إلى الرجل في ثوب واحد ولا تفضي المرأة إلى المرأة في الثوب الواحد. In this hadith, if you deeply look into this hadith, if you deeply look into uh, and think about this hadith, this hadith is uh, uh, saying that whatever in this time in this age of technology, modern age. If you see any uh, blue flames, if you see any uh, naked pictures, of, if you see any uh, films 
uh, that are naked and films are uh, non-Islamic and also with facade, fahsha, you know, that means you are doing a very, very bad thing. And you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't do that. And in, in the Quran, if you see, Kullil mu'minina yaguddu min awasarihim wa yahfadhu furujahum. In this ayah also, that ذلك أسكالهم إلى آخر الآية. You know, in this verse also, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, and don't look into this aura, even either men or women. So in this ayah also, uh, gives us lesson not to see any kind of this uh, pictures or, or any kind of uh, videos and films uh, that you know. Uh, make your heart black and make your heart sinful. Make your uh, mind, you know, very much uh, uh, corrupted. So we have to be with qalb as salim. We have to have a qalb as salim, not corrupted qalb. If we do all these things, we, we are involved in this uh, corrupted activities and akhlaq, that means we are corrupting our qalb. We are corrupting our uh, our you know mind. We are corrupting our life, and then we cannot grab or we cannot attain the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And next slide. There are others, uh, akhlaq, a sayya. You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam always used to uh, seek and do du'a. Allahumma inni. أعوذ بك من الشقاق والنفاق وسوء الأخلاق. الشقاق means you know a difference, a divisions between uh, Muslims, between إخوة. Don't divide among yourself. Don't uh, you know? Um, don't in, be involved in things in معاملة that creates problems among you. Don't. Uh, be against to someone, he is your brother, he is a Muslim in a illegal way, in a wrongdoing way, in not a proper way. So if you, if we do shiqaq, you know, a shiqaq actually a character of munafiqun, a character of Yehudi, Jewish. We cannot be, you know, uh, we, we cannot have shiqaq, we cannot have nifaq. Hypocrisy, we shouldn't have that. And sui akhlaq, that's what we need to do dua. Allahumma, because sometimes we cannot control ourselves. We do unconsciously involve in these things. That's why. And also in other uh, dua, Prophet Islam kana yaqul, Allahumma jannibni munkarati akhlaq wal amal wal ahwa wal adwa. That's why all this munkarati akhlaq al amal al ahwa and desires and also amrad, all we have to seek uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, his blessings. To be avoided from these things, to not to be involved in these things, even though as a human being, sometimes we, we unconsciously get involved in this uh, forbidden akhlaq, forbidden activities and also mu'amala. That's why we have to remember always if we do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek his uh, blessings, inshallah, we, uh, we will be away from this all wrongdoings and also forbiddings. And also in, any, any other, in another hadith, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala reported, Prophet sallallahu also warned uh, about ghiba and also at tuhuma. You know, this is very common nowadays uh, in our society in all muslim countries we can see we are doing easily ghaiba. we are gossiping we are doing tuhma we are you know uh, tagging someone with a sin that he is not involved in so this is very very bad thing very very bad character of a man as a human being so don't eat you, you know, uh, flesh of your brother, Prophet Sallallahu said, do you like to, you know, uh, eat uh, flesh of your brother? Uh, why are you involved in ghaiba? Why you are doing tuhma? So we Muslims uh, should remember, 
if we are involved in this akhlaq sayyi'a ar-radhila that means we are corrupting our heart we are corrupting our qalb we are corrupting families if you spread a fake news example please people are very involved in spreading fake news uh, in social media in facebook in uh, twitter in instagram in whatsapp whatever we see without verification we spread it we share it that's very wrong allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in ja'a fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyanu whatever you see don't believe easily you have to inspect you have to verify either this news is right or wrong true is or wrong with that verification if you spread it that means you are harming your brother you are harming a family you are harming a society you are harming the country a fake news can be a reason of a destruction of a family can be a sabab lihadami usra you know to destroy a society to you know create instability in a country so why we do that that's why you see if you uh, deeply think about whatever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ask us to be away from wallahi there are many wisdoms there are many hikmah there are many mawiza so that's why especially in ramadan when you perform you fast for ramadan you perform salawat you perform other ibadah you perform other ad'iyah and sadaqa zakat cooperation all these things you you know automatically can be avoid uh, avoided or you can automatically be away from this kind of akhlaq as sayya because a fasting man cannot be you know intentionally involved in a wrong doing or in a in in a bad characteristics that's why in next slide in my last slide we can see we must avoid first immoralities and injustice immoralities whatever fahsha wal munkar and injustice injustice we have to be away from zulm to others don't do zulm zulm is not only from the leaders political leaders not only from the government in every sector of your life in every moment of your life there is a zulm if you do unethically if you harm someone your brother in your family there's a rule if you don't fulfill your mohar if you don't give your mohar to your wife there's a rule if you harm your wife without any any reason there's a rule if you don't fulfill the uh, the responsibility toward to your husband there's a rule and also if you don't take care of your children that's also a rule rule in many ways in many sectors so we have to avoid this and watching illegal and forbidden pictures videos as i said because you are fasting you are doing ibadah and you know reciting the quran and the same time you are involved in you know watching many uh, bad things uh, and also many uh, naked pictures of feel that means you are destroying your your good things you destroying your qalb this illegal forbidden pictures videos films will lead you to commit sin will lead you to be involved in wrong doings so be away from these things and then number 3 is gossiping blasphemy and harming others you know don't do riba don't talk behind your brother don't lie to others and do and do not spread the fake news about anything don't harm your brothers don't harm your family don't harm your father your mother sometimes we, we forget our parents 
Sometimes I don't take care of my father, my mother. Why? We have to know what are the responsibility, duties towards your parents, your father, your mother, your children, and also don't harm other people in your society. If you are boss in your office, don't harm your staff. Do, don't harm them, don't talk to them in a harsh way. So be humble. Man rafa'a lillah, man rafa'a, man tawada'a rafa'a, rafa'ahu Allah. Whatever is, whoever is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, bring him up and up and up and up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him with the position, with the power. So that's why we need to believe in that. We need to be cooperative. We need to be uh, helpful. We need to be humble. And also hypocrisy, greediness, jealousy, hasad. And also uh, al-bukhul, hypocrisy, nifaq. We have to avoid these things. If you are involved in nifaq, in al-munafiqeen fi dark al-asfal min al-nar, and greediness al-bukhul, why we are sometimes, you know, very much greedy. We don't uh, spend for family. We don't spend for our relatives. We don't help. So we have to. Uh, avoid these things and don't do hasad. If someone is being a great person, don't do, uh, don't get involved in jealousy. Don't pray for him to uh, be down from his position. Pray for him to go far and far to be more famous, to be more uh, do in doing, uh, in involving good things. And so do dua. Al hasad, you know, very uh, a kind of bad a very, very bad, you know, character. And also Al-Hasad will bring you down. Will not bring that the person you are doing Hasad to down. That's why we need to believe in that. And we should you know, not, you know, uh, uh, transgress the sacred limits of Allah. Whatever Allah says, Awamir Allah, we have to follow. We have to uh, practice and we have to avoid, you know, monkarat. We have to avoid the the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. We, we shouldn't cross the limit. We shouldn't uh, cross the, the border, the boundary that given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, in Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In that, inshallah, if uh, we Believe that this is the last Ramadan in our life. Let's practice all these good things. Let's do uh, fulfill the responsibilities, religious responsibilities, societal responsibilities, and also ethical responsibilities. If we have to believe in that, then we can achieve the six blessings and much more than the six blessings and gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan, inshallah. That's why I said, let's, let's consider this Ramadan as our last Ramadan. And let's grab and attain the opportunities and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then inshallah, ta'ala, we will be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be among the muttaqeen. Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. We have to, ha we should have taqwa and we will have taqwa inshallah. We will be among the believers, among the, the closers who are closers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in hereafter inshallah. And we can uh, believe to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah. And last slide, uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to uh, give us tawfiq, to give us capacity, ability to uh, fulfill the requirements of Ramadan and to implement ibadah, to perform salat, to uh, fast Ramadan. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a strength and to uh, help us to bless us with his gifts, 
This is our message from Quran, from Sharia. Whatever I say, uh, if there is a wrong thing, is there is a, uh, any misinterpretation, I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us more uh, strength and iman and taqwa. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give all Muslims uh, strength to uh, perform in this Ramadan properly and to give us uh, blessings of Ramadan properly, completely, inshallah. I thank uh, Nadul Iqtisad al-Islami and all the board members and also especially Dr. Ala, uh, who is uh, doing a great job, mashallah. And uh, this is a great khidma, khidma diniya wa da'awiyya and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, inshallah bless you with his blessings and gifts. And I also thank all the participants who joined the session. And uh, please pray for us, pray for Muslim Ummah. And let's get ready to uh, grab the month of Ramadan. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاقِ وَالْعَسْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ السَّلَامُ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ جزاك الله كل خير دكتور محي في نهاية هذا اللقاء يتقدم نعم. نادي الاقتصاد الإسلامي بخالص شكر وتقدير للدكتور محمد محي الدين ماشي. على جهوده الواضحة ومشاركته الفعالة في تقديم هذه المحاضرة ونسأل الله تعالى أن يبارك في سعيه وينفع به الإسلام والمسلمين جزاك الله كل خير دكتور محي شكرا أخي بارك الله فيكم حياكم الله جزاكم الله خير نحن وياكم يا رب كلمة أخيرة لك